and welcome. I am Lisa Petrich, your Youth Director at Unity of Olympia, and I am so happy that you are here joining me today for this lesson. We are starting with our little prayer guides that remind us to be still, and our light that reminds us that of that light that's in, within each and every one of us as we move through the day. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for bringing us here together today. May we live, love, and grow from one another. May we know we are safe and well, and that our relatives are safe and well, too. Thank you, God. Amen. Our rock today, if it could say a word, would say possibilities, possibilities. And our Bible quote says, what is impossible with men is possible with God from Luke. And that could be men or women. What is impossible with men is possible with God. And that just means bringing God into our circumstances, bringing God into our life, recognizing the here and now we are able to create something else and something new. Through God, anything is possible. Well, I want to take a moment before I go into music and wish every mom out there a happy Mother's Day. I hope that your Mother's Day is filled with love and, and joy from your children, love and joy for your mothers, and that you are able to go forth today with love and joy. We are going to sing a song. And this is from my friend Jen Hanna. I am so happy that she gave me the chord so that I could sing this for you. It is the song Anything is Possible. And I have sung this with the kids before. If you know the song, please sing along. And we'll go forward. Let's see. Deep breaths. <sighs> What's your dream? That sometimes seems impossible Let the voices fade That tell you it's improbable And hold on to what you love Hold on to what you dream of And you will be unstoppable
did that song justice. Thank you again, Jan, Jen Hannah, for letting me, or giving me those wonderful chords so that I could sing that song for everybody. So as we talk about possibilities, we are going to move forth into overcoming something. So overcoming things. So let's, let's look at these children's faces. We've got the girl here. And she's looking a little bit, what is the emotion? I mean, what are they looking? They're looking like they are afraid. These are children that are showing some sort of fear or anxiety about what's happening. And I want to talk about ways that we can overcome those fear, those fears and those anxieties that come up. The first way I want to talk about, and I have little visuals here. We've got my peace dove. This is one of my first paintings that I did. And I really enjoy this painting. And it's a painting of peace. So thinking a peaceful thought can help you overcome a fear or get you past anxiety. The next thing you could do is maybe think a loving thought. And this is a nice painting that Mr. David did. And he wrote the word love. And he wrote the Chinese characters for love. Or maybe you could think a joyful thought. And these are things that you could just have in your tool bag for when things get a little bit to be too much. And when we think a joyful thought, I think of bubbles. Oh, that one was kind of fun. Let's do it again. Yes, bubbles are fun. They're joyful. And the other thing we want to think about is maybe, is maybe, a wonderment thought though. this is a magic wand we made and and or, and and it's just wonderment wonderment of the world wonderment of 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 what mother earth brings the earth around us the flowers the joy any kind of wonderment helps you in curiosity which i think is the word for the month with unity helps us to get back into Maybe a moment of God. Maybe a moment of God. So we're going to read a story today. And we're going to think about those words as we read the story. But this story is about a grandmother in Michigan. And the grandmother in Michigan is a babushka. And when babushkas, they go around and they wear some scarves over their head to be a babushka. They are Russian grandmothers, Russian grandmothers. And this little girl wrote a story about her Russian grandmother when she got older. Wrote a story about her Russian grandmother. And it's a story called Thunder Cake by one of my favorite authors, Patricia Polacco. And you can see the grandmother there. The grandmother there is dressed in a long dress. The, the dress is just a little different. Even with the child, it's a little different. But you can see that her head is covered. And that's why I have the head covering today. So here we go. Many of you may not know this. I am from Michigan. So for this a story, it kind of rings true to my heart. I, I didn't grow up on a farm, but there were lots of farms in Michigan. And, and I had family. That, I still have family there. And, and, and so this is definitely a story that rings true to my heart. I hope you can sit back and listen. On sultry summer days at my grandma's farm in Michigan, the air gets damp and heavy. Storm clouds drift low over the fields. Birds fly close to the ground. The clouds glow for an instant with a sharp crackling light. And then a roaring low tumbling sound of thunder makes the windows shudder in their panes. The sound used to scare me. The sound used to scare me when I was little. I loved to go to grandma's house, babushka as I used to call my grandma, had come from Russia years before, but I feared Michigan's summer storms. I feared the sound of thunder more than anything. I always hid under the bed when the storm moved near the farmhouse. This is a story of how my grandma, my babushka, helped me overcome my fear of thunderstorms. So let's go ahead and see how this starts. Grandma looked at the horizon drew a deep breath and said, this is thunder cake, baking weather all right. Looks like a storm's coming to me. And you can see she's looking off in the distance, sees the clouds and the storm and the animals are there. I wonder where the little girl is. Child, you come out from under that bed. It's only thunder you're hearing, my grandma said. Do you 
see her. She is under the bed. She hears that thunder coming. She's under the bed. All you can see are her shoes. The air was hot, heavy, and damp. A loud clap of thunder shook the house, rattled the windows, and made me grab her close. Steady child, she cooed. Unless you let go of me, we won't be able to make a thunder cake today. Thunder cake? I stammered as I hugged her even closer. Don't pay attention to that old thunder, except to see how close the storm is getting. When you see the lightning start coming real slow, or start counting real slow, when you hear the thunder, stop counting. That number is how many miles away the storm is. Understand, she asked. We need to know how far away the storm is so we can have time to make the cake and get it into the oven before the storm comes, or it won't be a real thunder cake. You see that grandma just consoling her grandchild. That's definitely love, isn't it? Definitely love in that moment. Her eyes surveyed the black clouds away off in the distance. Then she strode into the kitchen. Her worn hands pulled a thick book from the shelf above the wood stove. Let's find that recipe, child, she crowed as she lovingly fingered the grease-stained pages to a creased spot. Here it is, thunder cake. She carefully penned the ingredients on a piece of note paper. Now let's gather all the things we'll need, she exclaimed as she scurried toward the back door. I think that storm is kind of wonderment, don't you? Wondering what is going to happen when the storm comes. We were by the barn door when a huge bolt of lightning flashed. I started counting like Grandma told me to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then the thunder roared. Ten miles, it's ten miles away, Grandma said as she looked at the sky. About an hour away, I'd say. You have to hurry, child, gather the eggs, careful like, she said. Eggs for mean old Pe Nellie Peckhead? Oh, I was scared. I knew she was going to try to peck me. I'm here. She won't hurt you. Just go get them eggs, Grandma said softly. The lightning flashed again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I counted. Nine miles, Grandma reminded me. Mm. Storm's only nine. Will they get the cake made? I wonder. Uh-oh, they get a cow now. <gasps> Milk was next. Milk from old Kick Cow. As Grandma milked her, Kick Cow turned and looked mean right at me, and I was scared. She looked big. Zip went the lightning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I counted. Barum went the thunder. Eight miles, child, Grandma croaked. Now we have to get chocolate and sugar and flour from the dry shed. Wow, that's fun. Do you see her running away scared? Look at her. Because that mean cow gave her a mean look. It doesn't look that mean to me. I was scared as we walked down the path from the farmhouse through tangleweed woods to the dry shed. Suddenly the lightning slit the sky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I counted. Boom! Bob, boom! crashed the thunder. It scared me a lot, but I kept walking with Grandma. Yeah, she kept walking. The geese and the, and the goats and everything are walking with them. Another jagged edge of lightning flash as I crept into the dry shed. One, two, three, four, five, six, I counted. Crackle, crackle, boom! Kaboom! The thunder bellowed. It was dark and I was scared. I'm here, child, Grandma said softly from the doorway. Hurry now, we haven't got much time. We've got everything but the secret ingredient. Oh, I wonder what the secret ingredient could be. Three overripe tomatoes and some strawberries? Have you ever put tomatoes in your chocolate cake? I don't know. 
Grandma whispered as she squinted at the list. I climbed up high on the trellis. The ground looked a long way down. I was scared. I'm here, child, she said. Her voice was steady and soft. You won't fall. I reached three luscious tomatoes while she picked strawberries. Lightning again. One, two, three, four, five. Kabang! Boom! 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 The thunder growled. And there they are, they're making the cake. We hurried back to the house and the warm kitchen and we measured the ingredients. I poured them into the mixing bowl while grandma mixed. I churned butter for the frosting and melted chocolate. Finally, we poured the batter into the cake pans and I put them into the oven together. Lightning lit the kitchen. I only counted to three and the thunder rumbled and crashed. Three miles away, grandma said, and the cake is in the oven. We made it. We're going to have a real thunder cake. There they go. Put the cakes in there. They look, look at her so proud there. Look at how proud she is. A lot different than she was hiding underneath that bed in the beginning of the story, right? As we waited for the cake, Grandma looked out the window for a long time. Why, you are you aren't afraid of thunder. You are too brave, she said to she said as she looked right at me. I'm not brave, Grandma, I said. I was under the bed, remember? But you got out from under it, she answered. And you got eggs from mean old Nellie Paquin. And you got milk from old Kit Cow. And you went through Tangleweed Woods to the dry shed. And you climbed the trellis in the barnyard. From where I sit, only a very brave person could have done all them things. I think she's right. Look at her. I think that's a moment of love. Another moment of love and peace. And remembering what we, sometimes we forget when we get scared, we forget the things we've overcome and we have to remind ourselves who we really are. I thought and thought as the storm rumbled closer. She was right. I was brave. Brave people can't be afraid of a sound, child, she said as we spread out the tablecloth and set the table. When we were done, we hurried into the kitchen to take the cake out of the oven. After the cake had cooled, we frosted it. You can see they're setting the table and making everything all pretty. Oh, and I think that's the the T, where the T is. And there's like a word on the next page. A samovar? I think that's what that is right there. Just then the lightning flashed and this time it lit the whole sky. Even before the last flash had faded, the thunder rolled, boomed crashed and boom just above us the storm was here perfect grandma cooed just perfect she beamed as she added the last strawberry to the glistening chocolate frosting on top of our thunder cake look at all those there look at that wonderful cake with all those strawberries do you like cake with strawberries? Chocolate cake? I kind of do. As rain poured down on her roof, Grandma cut a wedge for each of us. She poured us steaming cups of tea from the samovar. That's what I was talking about. I was thinking we were trying to come up with what that was. A samovar is like a tea kettle. When the thunder roared above us so hard, it shook the windows and rattled the dishes in the cupboards. We just smiled and ate our thunder cake. From that time on, I never feared the voice of thunder again. That's so sweet. And there's the recipe for thunder cake. There's an actual recipe there, and it does say tomatoes in it. A half cup or a third cup of parade tomatoes. One third cup. And it's got other things in it too. And what a wonderful story. So when we think about love in that story, we think about the love that the grandmother and the daughter, or the granddaughter shared together and how much the grandma really knew that she could help the granddaughter overcome her fear 
of thunderstorms. When we think about peace in that story or peaceful moments, I'm sure after the storm, one of my favorite things after a storm is the rainbow afterward. You, Especially here in Washington, we get so many great rainbows after storms. And the joy that they felt with the, with the making the cake and setting it and creating it like a sacred moment together. That created joy in the story. And then the wonderment. And I really think the wonderment in the story is really the, the, um, the storm itself. It's the thunderstorm coming because that's the unknown. That's that fear of the unknown that we don't know what's gonna happen. And we have to remind ourselves, even when we don't know what's gonna happen, we have the strength to get through because through God, all things are possible. Anything is possible through God. So one of the things Mr. David and I did today is we took that recipe and we actually made a cake. Would you like to see that cake? Are you bringing me that cake as we speak? I think it's coming and it's a nice, beautiful chocolate cake. And we have our own Happy Mother's Day cake with strawberries and chocolate frosting. It just smells delicious. I wish I could just hand you a piece right through this because I know as you're looking at it, you're like, oh, that's such a good cake. And I'll have to let you know how it is, how the grandmother's recipe came out. Well, I'm so glad you joined me here today. Let's go ahead and close with a prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Thank you, God. And remember our affirmation today, through God, anything is possible. Have a great day.